Thanks for staying with us. It's time to look at the papers now and see what made it to the front pages of some of our national dailies. And to discuss that with us, uh, we have Mr. Chris Kainde Wandu, chartered arbitrator in the UK. Uh, good morning and welcome to the program, sir. Good morning, sir, and welcome to our viewers. Okay. Uh, today we are looking at, um, we're starting with the Punch newspaper and. Um, the Punch newspaper leads with uh, security agencies begin massive uh, soldiers police de deployment. That is hardship protest. Uh, that's what it's saying. They begin uh, massive deployment. Uh, NPF places operatives on red alert. NCASOs uh, fortify custodial centers. NSCDC deploys 30,000 personnel. So hardship uh, protest is coming up and uh, the security uh, agencies are deploying a lot of a lot of personnel for this i'd like your comment first and foremost if the government had done the need there wouldn't have been wasting of resources on deploying security agencies because there wouldn't have been the need for nigerians to protest that is the fact so um what the government is doing is just um just wasting resources as far as I'm concerned. Um, these are resources that would have been plowed into, even employ uh, that money into the security agencies and uh, getting the necessary equipment and other, uh, trying to improve uh, their welfare. It would have gone a long way because at the end of it, billions and billions of naira would be, you don't just deploy security agencies, right? you buy food for the very goods you're going to be the, uh, security agencies, the logistics, and the rest of it. But that is even not the issue. The last thing is that um, it seems that uh, if you listen to what the, the IG, the statement from the IG yesterday, the IG has finally succumbed to uh, that, um, it has um, lowered down his initial threat that there will not be protests. Then from there, he moved that the protest, uh, the protest leaders should go and put down their names at the various uh, uh, Police stations, right on their names, uh, their contacts, and the rest of them. Yesterday, he has turned it down to Nigerians have to they can protest. And this, uh, has asked all the DIGs, AIGs, commissioners of police to make sure that um, protect, uh, uh, those that are going to protest are protected and so that it will not be hijacked. And that is what we have been saying all this while. Every Nigerian has a right to protest. You, can, you don't need a police permit, you don't need any permit from anybody to protest that has been decided even up to the supreme court so what the police can only do or security agencies can only do is providing security and you see what has been happening within the last 24 hours where you are not saying we are seeing um, go, um the allegedly uh, government funded protesters against protesters um <laughs> uh, <laughs> rallies of buildings in some parts of the country but this is right. If government have done the needful, if the government, if the president hadn't done what he did on the 29th of May by unilaterally stopping uh, petroleum subsidy when he came in, when he would have sat down to look at the situation and able to take an informed decision on issues like that, when he floated in Naira the way he did, and other policies which he took unilaterally without even giving the second look, when the government refused to meet its own demand of providing certain palliatives to Nigerians. That is the result of us. So what Nigerians are protesting against is hardship. They are protesting against inability to feed themselves, their families, inability to move around because they cannot afford it, inability of their children to go to school because of... So those are the basics. But in as much as this um, protest is going to take place, it might be based on the security agencies to make sure that it is as peaceful as possible. It's possible that the protest against protests is peaceful and the one that was scheduled for a long time now is anticipated that, or is, uh, is, is going to be um, violent according to how the people are thinking. The government has been saying that it may be violent, it may be hijacked and all that, but people are protesting right now and it is not violent, which means protest is, is possible for protests not to be violent in Nigeria. Why is that other <laughs> one... Uh, labeled at a protest that might escalate into something else? When the protest is violent, you know, there are certain uh, people within government that are foiling that. 
Let me, let me give a classical example. In 2012, that was the Occupy Nigeria protest in Lagos. And, uh, in Lagos. It lasted for several days. Thousands and thousands of people trooped to the Ghana uh, uh, grounds at Ojota. This thing drawn, that's under a good talk, Jonathan. For the duration of that protest, there was no single incident because the government of the day allowed Nigerians to express themselves. A few weeks ago, there was a protest by the Nigerian Labour Congress and TUC over a minimum wage. And across Nigeria, that protest was so peaceful. Police uh, provided um, security for those uh, that were engaged in the protest. Um, and it went all successfully. The protest at the Ensa protest in Lagos was very peaceful at the Lekki Toll Gate for several days. We had the celebrities, Nigerian youth, and the rest of them converge at Lekki Toll Gate to, uh, to protest, beating drum, um, making noise, Mary, and the rest of them. It was not until the security agencies came in and started using uh, weapons, tear gas, and dressing to disperse protesters that if you remember that even the, even the government of Lagos State, um Babajide Sonwodu came to the protest ground and even joined the protesters as it were. It was not until security agencies started shooting, uh, started throwing tear gas and um, everything went out. That was when Woodlands took over the protest and now unleashed mayhem. So protest can be peaceful if we want it to be, which is why I said security agencies but let me tell you, the basic fact is that it has gone beyond just protests. The view of the government that is that if this is allowed to fail, then um, third, fourth colonies and Sitia may be able to take over the protests. And the outcome may be terrible. Um, it might be to assist the government and the rest of them. So the government needs to do the needful. But the, all this um, uh, making a meeting with. Personally, if you ask me, this protest is already successful, even if you don't hold, because the government has is now listening to the people. We've been seeing them calling traditional rulers, calling on this, calling on that, and the rest of them, and saying that they should be given time, whatever that means, to be able to meet the demands of Nigerians on issues like it. For me, whether it holds or not, because I don't know whether it's going to hold or not, on Wednesday, but even if it doesn't hold, the fact is that the government know that Nigerians are, are suffering, that Nigerians cannot be taken for granted again, that the essences of government should come to a stop, that the government should really sit down and look at the issues affecting Nigerians as it were. Even if this is not successful, if this continues, you can rest assured in the near future, the one that is going to happen, it will be organic in nature, that there will not even be noticed and the rest of the Nigerians might just put it to the street and before you know it, what we are trying to avoid will happen. Okay, um, well, but what is your take on the the body language of the, the president, not just the presidency, but the president himself? We have seen that his ministers are begging for time, uh, governors are begging for time that he's meaning well for people. We've also seen the president sign the minimum wage, uh, 70,000 Naira minimum wage into law. Uh, just uh, this morning, we're hearing that the federal government is going to start the selling of 50 kg rice in designated centers for as low as 40,000 Naira. But are these enough to douse the tension in Nigeria regarding this hardship that we're facing? It will not. All the, the government needs to do is go to start go back to status quo. If there is only one problem that you should have started all this, and that is the removal of all your subsidy. My brother, that was where the problem started. And after that was done, then you know the government say, Oh, we, we, uh, the the petroleum subsidy uh, it was not removed by us, it was removed by the former government before we came, it was not budget for, budgeted for. But who announced it? It was the president at his inauguration. The president he didn't wait to look at the books. He didn't wait to, to take over and look at the issues that's here. He didn't wait to have a meeting with stakeholders within the industry and be able to find a better way of handling. He just came and unilaterally said, oh, the subsidy is gone. And he said, we're in the monarchy. No, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. So the economic policies of government, so all these uh, necessary palliative uh, come and sell us, but where are you going to get the rice? Is it not the same one that they, they send to the state? 
that most of the states have not gotten the so-called rice. You send twenty dollars to a state, something that cannot feed the whole a one village. You say a state, you say you have that is not we're just wasting time, wasting money. The president to go back to I still believe that. And you know that the subsidy is being paid, whether they like it or not. So many people have come out, those that know, have come out to say that subsidy is being paid. As so of the last time, the one on one we read last week was that about we subsidized uh, uh, petroleum product to the tune of about 770 billion naira on a monthly basis. So who is fully good? So those are the issues. On to be able to sort out the fundamentals, all this in little palliative there ahead that's not fit. The needs of Nigerians is just a good. So let us go to back to start with. If that is done, and just as they have done now, um, by giving Dangote, uh, asking Dangote to pay um, the code, they are going to supply Dangote with about um, 425 or uh, 450 um, uh, barrels of, um, uh, of, uh, of um, um, crude oil uh, for the refinery, and it should pay in dollars. That is Naira, Naira. It should pay in Naira. Yes, in Naira, yes, to be paid, yes, to be paid in the yes, to be paid in Naira, uh, uh, rather. Those are some of the issues that we have because we realize that even within the system, there are so many cabals that don't want us to work for the place. And that is what you should be looking at. It's bloated, about bloated um, um, cabinets. Why do we need the 42, 42 uh, ministries in Nigeria at this period? What the constitution says that every state should have a minister. So even if you put at that, so we say 36 states and uh, um, FCT, that is constitutional, that is 37. Every day, you say Nigerians should tighten their belt, you are buying a, 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 new, a, a, new, a new plane that is costing billions and billions of naira. That's why the fact that you have over 9 to 10 um, um, planes within your fleet, you are building new, uh, new house for the vice president, and you ask yourself what happened to where you... So those are the things. You have to be able to show some level of empathy to Nigerians that... You really care. That is what Nigerians need at this point in time. And not also as if and your age are not talking down on Nigerians as if Nigerians are their servants. This will not happen. This will not happen. Nobody can do this. this will, anybody that is their um, voice is trying to show those are the issues. Those in government are supposed to speak for government and not speaking for government. They are, they are, they are, uh, they are to a large extent try to boil Nigerians into, uh, into going on this strike. Those are the issues that, for me, that are fundamental. Let the government do the needful. A price of yam is as ten thousand naira now. If that is a two bar of yam, we are talking about oh, we have signed the minimum with uh, now. Every day this should pay about a bag of rice is over eighty thousand naira. So even if the person that receives that seventy thousand buys the rice, what will you use in cooking it? Transportation is off the roof. You have seen what is happening now. Petroleum, uh, because of the scarcity, petroleum is about over 1,200 or 1,300 per liter in most parts of. So, so, what kind of country are we running? Those are the issues that should be addressed. And not just government calling certain people to Abuja, um, uh, giving them transportation, uh, feeding them, and they say they will go back. And you have seen the kind of thing is going. We now see pseudo groups, groups that are non existing, saying, oh, we have pulled out of it, uh, protest. We are, we are not, we are pretty out of, we are the part of those that organize, organize it. <laughs> the government should be educating those that organize this protest. So as to be able to listen to them and also put things in place to be able to, as I said, the protest may not go on on Wednesday, on Thursday, it may not be successful. But if we don't hold on to this and be able to make sure that government will not make sure that some of these issues being, uh, are not addressed, then the one that will happen later, is the one that is not organized, and that is the most dangerous. And Nigeria, I continue to say, a hungry man is an angry man. A, a man that has nothing to lose is ready to give in to anything, and that is the situation as it were. Mm. Yes, because uh, there are some people who will feel, if I stay at home and don't protest, I die. I go to the protest, yeah. even if they shoot me, I die. Something must kill a man. Yeah. And that's yeah. Yeah. You know, that's the, most terrible, the, the, the most terrible thing in a man's life is, Knowing that he has nothing at stake as far as his life is concerned. So he doesn't even care. He's ready to die, whether you are shooting or not shooting. And you know what they used to say? How many people soldiers will kill? You know, you know that slogan. Mm. It has gotten to that point, and I don't think we should allow this to happen. So government should listen to the people who are doing the need. Okay, away from the protest, do you think, we, you just touched on uh, Dangote, do you think that uh, now selling to Dangote in Naira and other things that you, those incentives that you mentioned are enough to 
um, or this is an end or the beginning of the end to this war that we've seen between Dangote and the stakeholders in the oil industry? I can tell you for people that some certain people within the NPC will also want to frustrate that uh, that directive. It has happened in the past, not only um, with uh, in the oil sector but other sectors. I've said time and time again that there are all, always some people within government that want because of their service. For goodness sake, somebody that is making billions and billions of dollars on a monthly basis from importation of we fight to that meal to be able to make sure that this doesn't succeed. So it is for government, the president, to make sure that uh, it is within the prerogative of the president to make sure that this works. You know that the president is the minister of petroleum. So if that directive is not succeed, then he will be held accountable and responsible. This is what we've been saying in the past. But look, you come to think of it, even if you are directing that the um, um, language should be given, uh, should be allowed to get that level of um, uh, good value, especially for uh, local consumption. The question we ask yourself, what is our total output in terms of production on a daily basis now? If you understand what I mean, Nigeria production has dropped to between 1.2 uh, 1 million to 1.3 million um, uh, 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 barrel per day. Ordinarily, there was a time that we are hitting about 2 million barrel per day in Nigeria. So we don't even have a no production, which is why we also come down to the issue of insecurity. We are certain people derive so much, everything boils down to corruption. We are certain people derive so much um, uh, pleasure in stealing us blind. Most of the crude are being stolen on a on daily basis. And we have security agencies who are supposed to, we are supposed to do the needful by making sure that this happen. We have gone as far as engaging a private uh, individual to secure these pipelines and making sure that we are paying, Nigeria is paying billions and billions of naira on a daily basis. But you still see this thing. So, so it takes the political will within government to be able to, if the president wants this thing to stop today, it will stop. Because government knows those behind this sabotage, they know those stealing this money and the likes. Look at what came out from the Interpol yesterday. Um, when the Interpol at their meeting just uh, stated that thousands and thousands of dollars are being shipped out of Nigeria on a daily basis, and that they know some of these people. So that you and I don't have dollars. Um, anyway, if you have, if you get to, then me I no get. <laughs> so, <laughs> so when, when you ask such things, then you realize that we are really. In this. So, but I hope that this works out, and it will go along to be able to solve some of this problem. Uh, because if we get, uh, you see what was said, it's about we we'll spend saving about seven point nine billion dollars on a yearly basis by just selling um, crude in naira uh, to local uh, refineries. That to me is a very good development. But how that is going to work out is what we are, we are yet to see. Okay, so the president has signed the minimum wage into law. Um... It, it, will it have a, a very significant impact on our economy or not? Well, whatever is fine. If, even as much as it does not impact the pocket of an average Nigerian, that is the, the, the issue for me. It's not just a, what Nigerians need is a living wage, not minimum wage. Mm. You can get a minimum wage, uh, but if your minimum wage, you have a, 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 a take home cannot take that cannot take you to the bus stop instead of taking you home, then that's a problem. As I said earlier on. I talked about the, I said if somebody in this room has somebody in seven thousand naira, how much is the, the mudu of gari? Mm. How much is a mudu of rice? How much is pepe? How much is tomato? How much is condiment? Some people have been living with that. You, you, you remember when we used to go in secondary school and used to say, give me rice. And you, know, mm -mm. you remember now? <laughs> 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 yeah, you remember. When you say, um, you say let, let me put this in, mm, no, just give me rice. People are eating without the necessary protein. Mm. So, um, if the government can be able to put all the necessary things in place, 70,000 naira may be enough for certain people. If you know that your, transport, your transportation is not going to, if you know that the cost of food items comes down, because those are the issues that need to be addressed. Nigerians cannot feed themselves. Cost of food item is so high. If it's brought down, by making sure that the government do the need for by making sure that people can go back to their farms, making sure that security, if they are secured, nobody is going to kill them. And we engage so much in agriculture, we spend so much. Some of this money that we are wasting on financing and donations can be channeled into serious mechanized farming. 
and we are going to use so much that Nigeria has the capacity of feeding itself and even exporting more to other parts of the world. But we cannot even do, we are just a, a, an elephant with clay. Nigeria is now an elephant with clay feet. It's so terrible. That is how bad the situation is. So it's not about signing 70,000 naira as minimum wage. The fact is that what Nigeria is living with 70,000 naira, but let them be able to go to market and be able to purchase food items that they can eat. That is the issue. So government should be addressing the issue of food. What we need now is a total revolution in the area of food. Revolution area of food. And once we can be able to do that, then we can feed up where populists, we can have enough to feed. So whether it's 70,000, 80,000, or don't forget that this will not be reviewed until the next three years. Hmm. Okay, uh, but there was something scary about uh, air travel, but the Minister of Aviation, according to report, um, Kayamu, has directed suspension of NAMA's 800% charge hike. Uh, there was this anticipated hike from NAMA, and uh, it was also anticipated that if it comes, that means that air travel will even be worse than it is right now. Right now, it's difficult to travel by air, even though it's like the safest um, uh, means of transportation right in Nigeria but if it had gone up 800 percent that would have been really really crazy he has reversed it now but I, I don't know uh, the reason why they would have uh, hiked it 800 percent if it has been met and if it has not been met whether this is even a good news for the aviation industry well the minister said he's uh, it, putting it on hold it's not like it has been totally cancelled you know that everything is on hold, just like the one with the telecom companies. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, and they continue to ask yourself, what is wrong with us? Nigerians are planning to go and protest. And somebody just wake up one day and just say, all oh, the lines that they are linked to me should be bad and should be blocked. I've done my own name linked to my phones about three, four times. And they still went ahead to ban me from making calls or receiving calls. Mm -hmm. Then somebody just wake up just about 72 hours to the protest. And now say they bad all this. Uh, and you saw what happened, the mayhem all over. Mm. That would have that is where the protest would have started. If if they don't come, if, if nobody say they can't get sense <laughs> about that thing. Now they still yes, now because we've already, already seen what people are doing. So people are already already protesting at most of the um, um, uh, telecom company offices and the rest of them, pulling down their put their pens and the rest of them. It will be worse today. But thank God, common sense prevail. Then back to the issue you raised. Now, 800%, I don't know why um, the minister uh, did that. I will tell you that uh, air transportation is so expensive now. I just came back from Potakot last week. One week ticket from Potakot to Lagos, I paid 176,000 naira. Just one week ticket, not two weeks. So you can imagine that I must have paid over 350 for a return ticket. Just going to Potakot, that's a one hour journey. So with this 800% that we um, envisage, now you are going to Abuja. The least flight you can get is about 250,000 naira. So if you are doing a return, about 300,000 naira. So how the Nigerian the, the road is not safe enough for anybody to move. If you, are, you just look at the uh, comparative advantage and what people do like this, well, I have to pay this 150,000 or 170,000. Because if I go on road and I get kidnapped and they start asking for 10 million naira, what cool? So what are we talking? What are you talking about? It's not even paying the ransom that they get. There are instances that people pay ransom and they still get killed. So it's the high level of insecurity. So what we should be doing is that making sure that, one, we get most of this aviation, because most of this aviation, uh, these airlines pay for most of what they use in dollars. Like aviation, Jet A1, and most of them are imported. It is only that they have started. So if you can be able to feed them properly, through locally, and make sure that they can get these products locally. I'm sure the FA will come down. And other aspects, the president, um, um, the minister, even indicted that the 800% uh, charge should be reduced. And even the airlines came out that if that has been implemented, then that's practically the end of the airline industry. We don't just there are services that we just are supposed to enjoy, no matter how remote it is. Subsidy, so many things that need to be subsidized. There's nothing that is practically not subsidized in other parts of the world. Other parts of the world, Subsidized uh, energy, they subsidized food, they subsidized even the bank. You remember what happened during the murder in the US when during the COVID that the government had to give loans to aviation, the aviation sector. Give them not even better, it was called Bella. When it also happened in the energy, 
they gave us um, um, also some kind of a subsidy so as to be able to retain that. So, as yourself, as a Nigerian, what do you gain as a Nigerian? What is it in the that? The only thing that I'm not to subsidize, we may be subsidized very soon, is the air that we breathe. So, that will not be subsidized, that will be taken, subsidy taken off, is the air that, because sooner than later, we may be tasked for breathing in Nigeria. FA that three years ago was 20,000 naira from Calabar to Lagos. 25,000. Yes, for Taco to Lagos and all that was just for between 20 and 25,000 naira. It's now. At, at, the point, at, the point it, at, at the point, it peaked at 50,000 naira. But the next time you know, it was 100%. It's terrible. Oh, well, we, let's, let's hope that one day we'll get to that El Dorado, but I, let's hope also that we don't have to go to the streets to fight all the time before our voices can be heard. We'll get to that point where uh, it's a true democracy, because democracy, as far as I'm concerned, is the ability of people to get their voices heard. You say something, you have an opinion, and you let the government know. You're angry about something, you say it, and they listen to you. That's why there's representation. It is not in building roads and in building houses because any government can do that. Even a dictatorship can do that as well. I'm sure that they're building um, <clears throat> roads and houses and everywhere else in uh, uh, Afghanistan and all that. It doesn't have to be a democracy for people to do that. It's representation and hearing your voice all the time. But this is where we'll wrap up, uh, Mr. Wandu. Thank you so much for being a part of our program this morning. As usual, we're glad that you were able to make it. If you build road and you don't have human beings to use it, then it's useless. So the best thing, the first thing is to make sure that you have, like, you have people living to be able to enjoy some of these facilities that you are talking about. Have a wonderful day, my brother. You too. God bless you. You too. Okay, we've been reviewing the papers and seeing uh, what the headlines are. We've been talking with Mr. Chris Wandu, a member of the arbitrators in the UK. And um, we're going to take a short break now. When we return, we'll be looking at Tinubu orders NNPC to sell crude to Dangote refinery in Naira. And let's see what advantage that will bring to our economy. Stay with us.